When it comes to home ownership, heating and cooling is one of the most expensive things that we pay for. Now what if I told you a DIY home improvement can actually have a return on investment unlike so many other projects that don't give you any return at all? Like when you install a pool or a jacuzzi or maybe even remodel your kitchen, those still cost money in the long run to use versus they never really become a free item versus this after a couple years could literally pay for itself and then it is virtually free to run after that. Hybrid mini splits give you the ability to run them on solar panels versus just running them on AC alone. This allows you to now run it on a DC circuit, which anybody can buy solar panels cheap. There are several places like Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace, even some links I'll have down below where you can pick up new large solar panels, literally throw them on the ground and power this thing up for as long as the sun is out. And then that can be free heating and cooling that eventually will pay for itself in a certain amount of time, depending on how much your kilowatt usage is. Now, depending on the price you pay per kilowatt, which I'm curious, let me know what you pay. Some people are paying over 20 cents per kilowatt, which at 20 cents a kilowatt, if this cost you about two dollars and sixty cents a day and running it for around 10 hours in a 24-hour period it would take almost two years to pay this off and that includes buying a few solar panels as well because this only costs about twelve hundred dollars so then you buy about four or five solar panels throw them on the ground get them somewhat oriented to the sun and now this will start paying for itself and in a couple years then it becomes free to run during the day i've never seen a pool or a jacuzzi paid for itself it's just something that continues to suck money out of your pocket versus something that can actually add money into your pocket after it pays itself off. Even like a car, you never get money back out of that or it becomes something that is free to use. So I'll show you some ways that you can use this and I'll show you how easy it is to hook this up. Installation is simple, adding solar panels to it is simple, and I'll give you a couple other ways that you can hook this up and use it. Now mini splits are a great way to save power and heat and cool your home. The wiring is pretty simple because the control cable is all numbered 1, 2, 3, 4. The mounting bracket is a single bracket that will come with screws and anchors. There is one hole that you'll have to drill that is about 2.5 inches. Now taping up the insulation will help this push through the hole. That way it'll go through the other side of the wall. And this is where you may want some help. But after that, hanging on the bracket is really easy. It clips right down, pushes against the wall, snaps into place. And that is virtually it, as this only weighs about 35 pounds. Now, one thing that's nice about this one is that the lines are pre-charged. You simply take off the caps. There will be one Allen screw inside each one. And then you'll simply open this up until the screw goes all the way to the little stop ring. So you'll hear the line start to charge. And then you just open it until it stops on the ring. And that is simply it. And you'll do the same thing to the bottom one. And once you're finished, then you can go ahead and put on the protective caps again. And now the system is virtually ready to run. You will have four of these little keepers, which two on the bottom here and two on your upper connection, which sometimes a little persuasion is handy. Now the hardest part of the job will be maneuvering your copper wires, which you do not want to kink. The AC wiring is actually pretty easy if you're familiar with it. The control cable again is just plugging in one, two, three, four, and your DC solar input is also pre-wired. When it comes to laying out solar panels, this can be done virtually anywhere and doesn't take much time at all. I'm simply gonna lay down four solar panels, which all of these are 335 watt LG panels. Now finding used solar panels right now are super cheap. You can find them on Craigslist, you can find them on Facebook, but you just wanna make sure that when you are buying them, you test them properly first and you kinda of know what to look for. Another thing too is that I will have links below where you can find residential panels like this now super cheap. The prices have really come down. So I'll leave some links below where you can find good quality used ones and also brand new ones at really good prices. Now all we have to do is hook these up in series to get a voltage of at least about 120. I found that's where it worked better if you didn't meet the lower requirements. This unit takes about 90 to 350 volts in order to have its main kind of operational voltage. So you want to at least get 120 because as you put a load on it, the voltage will drop. So 90 is not quite enough. So we'll just hook these up in series real quick. Now when you hook these up in series, it's just a positive and a negative. That is it. You just clip them together and you do the same thing for the rest of them. 
Okay, so now we have our positive and our negative pigtail and we built basically this small array. This took less than 10 minutes to put these into series so we could then add up all the voltage of all of these solar panels into one spot. So by putting them in series, you take the voltage and you just add it together. So if this is 40 volts, that's 40 volts. Then you have 80 volts. Add another 40 volts and you have yourselves 120 then 160 volts roughly, but we're gonna wait for the sun to come out, hit these, and then we will check our voltage here. Now, obviously this isn't the best or ideal location because the sun only hits it for about five hours to maybe six during the day after it ends up coming up in the morning. So I don't really use these too much to power up the mini split. I end up using these more to charge up batteries and other things. So this is actually what I use to power up my mini split most of the time. I have solar panels on the top of my RV. So with having this on the side of my house, I don't need permits to add solar panels. And now this is kind of like a mini powerhouse. If you have a construction trailer or your RV on the side of the house or somewhere you can put solar panels on the ground, you don't need permits. So then you don't have to pay money to have somebody install it. You can just throw them on the ground like we did there. It's ready to go. It's super simple. And then you can start saving money and power up this thing for free eventually. Now our open circuit voltage with all four panels is about 144, which is a good voltage. More would be better. And it's drawing about 8 amps on DC only. But as we switch this over to AC power, I'll show you what the power consumption looks like. Okay, this is around 1030 in the morning. It's about 85 degrees using 560 watts and about 4.7 amps. Okay, it's about 105 degrees now and now the unit's in direct sun. Okay, now you can see we're using 1,070 watts and the unit is powered up on turbo mode max cooling and this is the most I've ever seen it draw is right about 9 to 9.1 amps. This is with the mini split running off of the solar panels that are on the ground and you can also get historical data. So the orange would be AC power, but then when it switches to green, this is when it's purely running off the solar panels only, and you can go and look back at data from days, months, or years. Another wonderful benefit to mini splits as well is that they are super silent and they're a lot more efficient because they will vary the loads as the temperature changes. Now this is only a 12K BTU unit. You can get a 24K that's also a hybrid as well, but that will cost a little bit more money. So your return on investment might take a little bit longer. That one also runs on a 220 volt system. Now, when it comes to return on investments, you obviously want to try to find the best deals utilizing discount codes, which I will have some of those down below as well. So see if that's going to be something that'll be able to help you. And when it comes to return on investments, a lot of people want them right away or in six months. And usually that's just not feasible with any project. It's always going to be at least a year or two or more before you see those returns. And then you really start saving money in the long run. It's just like being in the stock market. The longer you're in, the better versus trying to time it. So again, Again, when it comes to home improvements, this is a great idea to help save you some money in the long run to get you off of those top tiers and to keep more cash in your pocket. I hope you liked the video and I hope to see you guys in the next one.